Okay, so I'd like to take a quick look at how the relative velocity equation that I plunked down uh, in previous relative motion lectures, where that comes from, how we derive that. And reminder, it looks something like this, okay? The actual subscripts don't matter so much. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, looks something like this, right? Where you have this pattern where the, the B reference frame is sort of sandwiched by the C and the A, and the C and the A happen in the same order in the same places as they do on the left. But that's just sort of like an algorithm. That's a shorthand for dealing with velocities when you know something about them and when things are moving relative to one another at uh, constant velocities, right? We specified inertial reference frames, right? In other words, if we had two different people here, uh, person A and person B, say, okay, well, then what this tells us is that the velocity of both of these people, assuming they're both, both moving, but one could be stationary and one could be moving, um, but the velocities of each of those people that are observing uh, some other object are going to be a constant relative to another, that, that velocity, okay? And uh, the object that, say, they're observing is something uh, may maybe very exciting. Let's see, we, we've got a uh, flying saucer. Here we go. Get a little alien in there, some portals, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and we'll call that uh, C. Okay. Now, as far as where this equation comes from, we can get that just by taking a snapshot like we have here in... Um, in time, where the two observers of the spacecraft, A and B, are separated from each other by some distance, right? So the um, position of B relative to A, right? So that'd be a vector magnitude, because it has a magnitude and direction. And at this snippet in time, we also have uh, that B is separated from C by a certain distance, right? So we draw from there to the spaceship, and that vector would be R of C relative to B, okay? And then lastly, um, this A absor observer is also looking at the spaceship, and so it would have a distance from it to the spaceship of R of C relative to A, right? Because the subscript ske scheme still works the same way as it ever did before, right? Just to keep things organized. So that we can look at a set of subscripts and a vector and know that, oh, well, that's the position of C relative to A, or the position of C relative to B, etc., etc. Okay. Now, looking at this diagram, I haven't drawn it particularly well, but you can see that in terms of the head-to-tail method, right? In terms of the head-to-tail method, you've got um, R sub B A plus R sub C B equals R sub c a right that third vector there now how do we get from there to our relative velocity equation well it's actually really simple right so first let's write down what we've got which is that in terms of the diagram here at this moment in time okay we've got that the position of c relative to a is equal to the position of C relative to B plus the position of B relative to A, right? Just using what we already know about how 2D vectors sum, okay? Now, how is position rel related to velocity? Well, we know that if we take a time derivative of a function of position, then we will get a velocity. 
and we know that we're just taking this this picture, right? This picture uh, right over here that we're talking about, okay, is only valid for this one moment in time, right? Assuming that um, this this B guy here is is moving with some velocity, uh, velocity of B relative to A, okay. Well, then, you know, a second goes by and all of these position vectors are going to be different because B is moving relative to A, which means it's also moving relative to C, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So, um, if we take a time derivative of all of these uh, time-dependent positions, we should get an equivalent velocity. And when we do that, so taking a time derivative... Oh, my handwriting. My apologies, folks. Okay. Well, by definition, DDT of R sub C A is just going to be V sub C A. In other words, velocity of C relative to A. And likewise, the time derivative of the position of C relative to B and the time derivative of position of B relative to A, those all translate into the corresponding velocities as well. So V sub CB and V sub BA. And we get back exactly what I just kind of wrote down for you in the previous lectures on relative motion. Slick, huh? Just using the definition, setting up a nice diagram in terms of showing the position of this spaceship relative to these two um, gawking observers can, along with the definition of what a velocity is, just give us the relative velocity equation for this situation where this velocity right there is constant. Okay, once you have reference frames, so, you know, observer A and observer B, uh, a, observer A and observer B accelerating relative to one another, well, then th th things get weirder, more complicated, certainly. Okay, you have non-inertial reference frames. However, in this situation where you have non-inertial reference frames, in other words, not accelerating, um, <clears throat> If these two observers are observing C and the alien spaceship ob uh, observes that it has uh, been detected by these people on Earth and decides to accelerate on out of here and go back into space, well then, um, we can take another time derivative of the same equation. Take a time derivative yet again, okay? Except here... We know by definition, right, because we're limiting ourselves to A and B moving at a constant re velocity relative to one another, that kind of reference frame, non-inertial, that means that this velocity, right, which is this velocity, is a constant. So you take a time derivative of a constant and you just get zero, right? So what we get is DDT of that, which is the acceleration of C relative to A, so the acceleration of the spaceship relative to human A, is equal to the acceleration of the spaceship relative to observer B. And the last term is just zero. I'm just writing out the time derivatives. And there we are. So this goes to zero because the velocity of B relative to A and vice versa is um, a constant, so time derivative is, is zero. And the other ones of these were just applying the definition of acceleration, that it's a time derivative of the corresponding velocity. All right. So that tells us that whatever acceleration we observe, whether we're observer A or whether we're observer B, the acceleration that we observe in spaceship C, the thing that we're observing, 
is going to match no matter what reference non-inertial reference frame that we're in. That can occasionally come in handy as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this little video showing us where our major tool for relative velocities came from. And I will talk to you again soon.